Hi folks, good evening. And of course, I decided to start off this evening's live with the members of the Mount Carmel Revival Mission Church from what town, Jamaica, because that's the music I ended off or that's the music I used in the last live, of course, linked to emancipation. And this live this evening is also linked to emancipation, but it is linked to or it is looking at what we're going to be discussing is a particular attitude towards emancipation that I have seen picking up pace in the last couple of years. But before I get into the details of the live, let me greet people properly because I know my audience is our audience with brought up C. So Len Lee's Jazzy, Fireball, Fabian, Cheryl, Merlin, Camille, um, Erlas, Michael, Daryl, Marvin, Sharon, Natasha, Rondell, all of you that are here, Gerald, Ashleen, sorry, Ashley, Chantel, Sharon, Wendy, all of you that have come to spend this Wednesday evening with me. Hi, Kareem Hollinsworth. Hi, Sonia Maria. Because I am sure there are lots of other things you could be looking at, you could be doing. Hi, Ms. Ince on YouTube. Um, Kareem said he had to inbox me something else and Kareem you put that all up on the live for everybody to know your business so Kareem suppose me I want people to know your inboxing me thing um, hi to Len Lees, to Tay Martinez, Francilla, Francilla how are you going girl? Nikisha, Roslyn, the loads of you on here already more than 200 of you have already logged in so we good to go hi Wilma nice to see you on the youtube platform and of course nice to see those of you that are on the facebook platform as well hi afia morning and good morning to you because i know you're in japan so it's tomorrow already hi krizel um good right so sunday evening was supposed to be the last live for a couple weeks because i plan to come back for independence hi petal hi is it guava hi guava right so Sunday evening was meant to be the last live for a little while. And then, but I was going to continue to be posting on my pages, um, my personal profile and of course the news source page. Because of course if I go entirely silent, there's so much news that will be taking place and I wouldn't have time to catch up on all of that when I returned. So I was going to continue to post. And of course there are a couple interviews in between that I'm hoping to be able to land. For instance, I want to reach out to the PSA president for a number of things. The situation at Wasa, and of course, the CPO has made his final offer of 4% in terms of salary increases. So I want to be able to do a couple interviews on things like that and put the interviews up and out there. Now, the interviews may not necessarily be done as lives, as in I can pre-record the interview and then upload it, time it, and of course, it premieres on both platforms. YouTube and Facebook and you are in a position to see the interviews but over the last couple of days a couple of things would have happened there would have been emancipation day in and of itself and there would have been activities surrounding emancipation and a series of posts that were also cropping up around the whole idea of statues and how we're looking at history and historical events and a major trend or theme throughout all of these things of course is the contribution of african descended persons of black people to this space and when i was looking at the commentary and when i was looking at how people were positioning their opinions i thought to myself so why for the last couple of years around emancipation everybody just be all of a sudden up in their fields about the day as a holiday. For a number of years now, I've been seeing people asking why we have Emancipation Day as a holiday. That's one major question. Then another question has been, well, why do we feel the need to change the names of monuments and streets? And um, is it a situation where there's only certain kinds of people going to be celebrated and going to be um, going to be commemorated and 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 their, their memories are going to be upheld so i'm looking at those conversations and then i'm also looking at the way in which people just seem to be very upset about emancipation and emancipation day and in the midst of all of that um the con the 
um, I, I, I guess it's a kind of conversation, the posts between myself and Philip um, took place and I felt it was important to come and discuss a couple things here. Because the live that I am doing this evening has very little to do with informing them or responding to them. The live that I am doing this evening is more so to inform my audience, to get my audience to arrive at the point where when you see certain conversations, when you see certain dialogues taking place, um, hang on a second. I'm seeing somebody asking something about the YouTube feed. The YouTube feed is up and running fine. Right. When you see certain dialogues and certain conversations taking place, I want you to be more empowered about how you are responding to persons because there are posts and comments being put up on Facebook and we're going to be looking at all of those things this evening and we're going to deconstruct them. So this evening, more than any other evening and most of my lives are structured like classes, right? That's something that everybody who comes to my, who comes and sits on, in on these lives, they notice that I structure things like a class, like a lecture. So this evening, more than any other evening, I am structuring things in that way because today is a teachable moment. Today is a lesson. Today is me going through all of those things that have been said and showing you how to deconstruct things. Hi, Marie. Starboy is fine. Starboy is actually sitting at my feet. Starboy is actually one of the reasons that I don't do multiple lives on a weekly basis because it's hard to get him calm so that I can do so that the space can be quiet for me to do a live but I took him for a nice long walk and then gave him something to eat and he settled down by my foot so hopefully he don't wake up in the middle of the live and start to bark down the place right so the first thing let part one of the lesson is this the posters that I put up the posters that are designed for these lives are part of how I set the tone for the live. So, of course, this evening is going to be very satirical. I'm going to be pun taking punches at all of the persons. And I'm sure you all noticed Kamla, right? So, Shilla in the ad, in the poster. I'm sure you all noticed Philip in the poster. But there is one more person in the poster who is from Trinidad and Tobago who is linked to the conversation we're going to be having here this evening. And I'm wondering how many of you recognize who the third person is. Because we're going to be talking about the things that Kamla would have said. We're going to be talking about the post that Philip put up. And we're also going to be talking about black business. So up in the corner, at the very edge, right Next to Colin Kaepernick's Afro, we have Curtis Williams, who is the editor of the Business Guardian. Right? So we, uh, it, so lesson one, you must pay close attention to the posters. And then when I put the posters up, because each poster has a lot of breadcrumbs in them to point you to what I plan to touch on in my lives. Right. So. Let we start the thing. Let we get the ball rolling. So I want to talk about, the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that we seem to be in denial. And when I say we, I'm not just referring, I'm not referring to you guys. I'm referring to persons who are not necessarily of African descent or persons who might be of African descent, but they ensure they want to identify as African, right? Or they don't necessarily want to lay claim to having African blood. And so as a result of that, there is a lot of pushback at any celebration or joy from black people about being black people, especially on a day like today. I want you all to understand something. 1834, the year in which the Emancipation Proclamation took place, didn't happen overnight. 
So people didn't just wake up in August 1834 and decide to set African persons free. 1834 would have happened as a result of decades of rebellion and revolt starting from all the way back in the 1700s and that's one of the reasons I had Lovell Francis come here on Sunday night to talk to us about the history. So starting from back in the 1700s there would have been a wave of rebellion and revolt taking place in different plantation societies not just in different plantations you know in different societies more often than not Jamaica so there was a lot of rebellion and revolt in Jamaica but Jamaica was not the only island many of the other islands would have smaller rebellions and revolts and it would upset the planters and the plantocracy because of course they thinking their society likely to collapse and it might end up being a situation where their way of life is overturned and of course they are ever mindful about the atrocities that they have visited on black people so there is always ever the concern that black people will get to the point where they respond and retaliate in kind like band together and eradicate white people right so because because those things would have taken place 1834 happen and 1834 is a significant year and emancipation is a significant action because emancipation creates a ripple effect throughout the entire world emancipation created a ripple effect throughout the entire world because colonization and enslavement in and of itself also created a ripple effect throughout the world. So to put an end to free labor, to put an end to free labor that was leading to the enrichment and wealth of these other countries obviously had a huge impact. Putting an end to emancipation also meant that all of the other groups, the subsequent groups that came here as labor, emancipation paved the way for all of these other persons from other ethnic groups to end up in the Caribbean as bond labor. Because you see, if emancipation didn't take place, then there would be no need to supplement the labor force in the Caribbean and the New World. But because emancipation occurred and because the planters were heavily reliant on having a labor force that they could control and a labor force that they could pick and choose what kind of wages they paid to, they needed to have alternate sources of labor. Last year, when I did the series of lives around emancipation remember we did several programs i did about eight programs last year around emancipation one of the areas that i talked about was labor and when i talked about labor i pointed out to you all that from 1834 to 1838 and all the way up to 1845 black people or the emancipated persons on estates would work um would they, because from 1834 to 1838 they would have been apprentices so they would work on the estates for a particular period of time and then the other part of the day they would then work on their own pieces of land their own plots of land right and i talked about the fact that they were able to command a very high price for labor here in trinidad so our labor prices, what we what enslaved and formerly enslaved persons from 1834 to 1840 were able to charge for labor was higher than it was in the rest of the Caribbean. In other parts of the Caribbean, they were paying people 25 cents, 35 cents a task. Here they were paying people between 50 cents to a dollar for a task because there was less of a labor force here. 
So labor in Trinidad and in Trinidad, sorry, I can't say anti, I can't say and Tobago yet because Tobago was not yet part of the union. Labor in Trinidad commanded a higher wage. The planters didn't like that. And because people were commanding a higher wage, they could pick and choose which jobs they did. They could pick and choose how many jobs they did for the planters. And the planters wanted to be in a position to say to the workforce, which would have been for hundreds of years a free workforce. So the minute they had to dip in their pocket and actually pay our workforce, they was bending and screwing. So because they was bending and screwing about having to pay a labor force, they then began to petition the crown. And there is a planter by the name of Burnley. One of these days, because I have some of Burnley's books, one of these days, I'm going to come here after I sit down and read through and explain to you all how exactly we went from emancipation to indentured labor. Because there was a whole meeting of planters and the planters came together and petitioned the crown and argued to say that the only way the um, sugar estates in Trinidad at that point in time could survive is if they were in a position to bring in bond labor, cheap bond labor. And so the bringing in of cheap bond labor meant that the price for task work was suppressed, was pushed down. So instead of 50 cents to a dollar for a task, the planters then began to offer between 25 cents to 35 cents. But I think eventually it kind of leveled out at about 50 cents per task. The other issue, of course, would have been denying access to land, certainly to fertile land from around the estates. But we talked about, we talked about land and thing before, and I don't want to bog down the live with all of that because I have plenty to discuss. I ain't start to touch things yet. But all of this is the preamble. And I know all you don't mind. All you, all you just stick around and listen to me. So there are many people who don't want to talk about and don't want to, ac to acknowledge the impact of emancipation. They want to pretend that emancipation is not a big deal. They want to pretend that emancipation and black people and the contribution of black people here is irrelevant and there's a lot of language centered around that there's also a lot of language centered around why black people can't forget about the things that happened in the past why they always have to be talking about the things that happened in the past does anybody here ever turn wrong and ask any of the other groups forget about what has happened to all you forget about your family forget about your history forget about your ancestors because this is the irony, right? This is the gaslighting that's be taking place. We live in a space where we always hearing people talking about um, we don't maintain things, we don't upkeep things, we don't like to remember we history. And in the same breath, when they say to us, we don't like to remember history. Of course, here they're referring to colonial European white people history. The minute we start to talk about our history and what happened to us and what we endured and what we transcended. Oh God, a little fed up talk about slavery. Why are all this talking about that? Because it happened. Because it is part of our past. And further to that, it is part of the national past, the regional past, the hemispheric past, the entire world's past. Enslavement didn't happen in a vacuum. And further to that, emancipation is not something that only impacted on black people. Emancipation also impacted on white people. And white people don't ever want to talk about emancipation. They don't ever want to talk about how many slaves they owned, how much land they had, how much money they make off of black people and how much compensation they received in the aftermath of emancipation. There is a whole aspect to emancipation that never gets discussed here. 
So we talk about Africans. We talk about what the Africans endured. We talk about what the Africans achieved. But emancipation does not only have to do with African descended people. Emancipation has and continues to have a huge impact on European and European descended people. And bet your bottom dollar, once I'm around and I remember, next year, that is what I'm going to look at. Because remember, last year, when we talked about emancipation, I got the descendants of a family that once owned slaves in Jamaica and Tobago to come and talk to us. And he came and he talked about how wealthy his family was historically because of enslavement. So one day, that other aspect of emancipation that we do ever focus on, the European aspect of emancipation, we will be discussing the European aspect of emancipation. Bet your bottom dollar. Right. So a lot of people are in denial. They don't want to talk about emancipation because to talk about emancipation means the following things. It means you have to acknowledge that white people trafficked black people. You have to acknowledge that white people make ho to to amounts of money from being white because they were given land just on the basis of the fact of being white. And they were also given land on the basis of how many black people they owned. So that is one of the reasons nobody wants to talk about emancipation. People also don't want to talk about emancipation because to talk about it means that you have to acknowledge that black people are humans, that black people were torn away from societies that they had built black, back sorry, in Africa, and that black people were brought here. And despite all of the brutalization that took place, they continued to live and thrive and create communities and cultures in this space. You also don't want to acknowledge emancipation because once you acknowledge emancipation, you have to acknowledge that emancipation is what allowed for new groups and other groups to arrive here, to be here. So emancipation as an event in 1834 and emancipation as a holiday that has been celebrated um, for the last 186 years, yes, for the last 186 years, somewhere thereabouts, is a holiday that reminds people of many things that they want to avoid. And I want you all to understand this. In 14 years, 14 years from now, we will be celebrating 200 years of emancipation. And I'm telling all of this from now. Once I am around for that 200th anniversary of emancipation, I'm making sure Vonette performing on a 40-foot music truck through the length and breadth of Port of Spain. If they feel Tongue had parade this year, wait for when the 200th anniversary reach. So in 14 years from now, mark your calendar, 200 years of emancipation. One of the things that has always struck me is this. We when I say we, I'm talking about African-descended people. African-descended people, they celebrate the end of emancipation. Other groups, they celebrate arriving. They don't celebrate the end of their systems of indenture. And remember, there are three groups that were under indenture here. You had the East Indian population. You had the Portuguese po population. You had the Chinese population. None of those other groups ever talk about when, um, when, their terms, when their system of indenture ended. We celebrate the end of an oppressive system. We don't ever celebrate arriving here because of how we were brought here, 
how we were made to be in the Caribbean. We didn't show up here with anything, not even our names. Every other group showed up and they were allowed to come with whatever they could bring um, as whatever they could bring as luggage in the crossing to allow them to settle here. We were brought here with nothing, stripped of everything, not even our names. And we would have had Sushila come to remind us earlier this year that we don't have we own names, we have slave master names. And you know what? Sushila, thank you for that history lesson. So let me now proceed with my history lesson. So one of the interesting chats. Yes, Emerald, let me add this comment to the broadcast. He says, interesting, I never thought of that. Other groups celebrate their, their arrival. Yes, other groups here celebrate reaching here because arriving here meant work. It meant employment. It meant being able to improve their lot in life. In arriving here, they were in a position to earn money that they could actually send back to family members. And it meant that they would have employment and the chance to improve their lives. If I was to ask you all now, what date did indenture end? I'm pretty certain nobody could tell me. Everybody will be able to tell me the year, right? Because the last, the last contract would have been 1917 and it would have ended in 1921, three years later. If I ask all, it was the exact date that was the end of indenture. I'm sure you all don't know what was the last date, that, what was the, the, the date itself that indenture ended. Well, I could tell you, January 1st, 1921. Nobody to celebrate the end of indenture here. Indentureship is not celebrated. The end of indentureship is not celebrated. You know what gets celebrated? The start of indenture. And I always, I've always found that quite curious. Why not celebrate the end of the system that was so oppressive? In any case, persons of West African descent celebrate the end of enslavement via emancipation. So let's get into it. Right. So this is one of the first posts that I saw this week that had me, well, I can't even say confused. I'm not confused at all. So what's stopping them? And of course, this is linked to the, this is linked to the Guardian front page. As a matter of fact, let me show you what it linked to. So that way we could reference it. But the reason, I don't want to get into the Guardian front page story yet. But I did want to talk about, did I put the Guardian things here, boy? Yes. So this, um, this was the Sunday business, right? So Sunday business Guardian's front page picture. More black businesses needed. And this was one of the posts on it. You will see that this post picked up 226 reactions most of it likes 